Well, probably some of you have heard, and if not, it's about time you did. There are some big changes to the tax and tax laws. Yes, first of all, you might want to check your withholding, but that's a whole nother matter. Uh, the IRA accounts, yes, again, that's not redundant, individual retirement arrangement accounts. Biggest change, they've increased the amount that you can put in by $500, whether you're over or under 50. Yes, for you youngins out there below 50, you can put up now $6,000, $7,000 if you're over the age of 50, and that's for the aggregate between your deductible and taxable traditional IRA as well as your tax-free Roth IRA account. The traditional deductible IRA account is uh, for those who don't have a pension plan and or for those who have low income so they can supplement it and it's treated the same way it's a deferred taxable payment by the way I should again note that you don't get any of those taxable benefits associated in a cash account which is special capital gains treatment and qualified dividends on US securities be that as it may IRAs certainly are a desirable thing you want to start sooner we'll look at that in just a moment they've also tweaked the amounts for which you have a sliding scale elimination for the ability for you to qualify and again a relatively new provision is that working or non-working spouses are allowed to do so noting that you see that that exemption is associated with the Roth married limit when applied to the non-working spouse as you can see on the chart for the deductible IRA and as I always like to note, the sooner you start, the better off you are, with the counterintuitive portion again being, if you just go 10 years longer from 30 to a 42 payment period, whether it's from 20 to 60 or, say, 30 to 70, that extra 10 years doubles it at the end. And if you get a no-load, low-expense ratio index fund, boy, you know what? You can double it again. Likewise, I've updated the ways that you can get the monies to set aside for maxing out your IRA accounts, or maybe a trip to Europe, either case. And that is, first of all, maybe stop paying that neighbor kid $20 a week to mow the lawn. You know what that is? $1,000 a year! Or cut back on that cable. Or even maybe start thinking about where you're going to save money in terms of oh maybe happy hour okay let's not do happy hour how about instead you drive that extra couple of blocks to the gas station that's a little bit off the freeway oh gee that's only 20 cents a gallon you know you work that out that's a hundred and fifty dollars a year something to think about Stop playing the lotto. Cheaper coffee. I know everybody says that. Driving slow. I don't do that one either. Uh, I, you, you probably have fluorescent bulbs has already been maxed out. Uh, lower those insurance deductions. You know, that insurance is not for the scratch from your ex. It's for when you went this way and the automatic transmission went that away. That's something to think about. And, oh, here's one. Get one of those ATM debit cards that's for cash only which gives you a rebate no matter whose ATM you use you know what that adds up to maybe a hundred and fifty dollars a year and if you do cut back on your cable it might be also time to cut back on that phone bill or if you still have a landline line service not a bad idea in case of an emergency only thing that still works get measured rate service that'll save you maybe a hundred and some odd dollars a year cut your own hair I know it's like you know cutting the lawn uh, street parking instead of paying extra that adds up you know you know the dollar off coupons 
Boy, that starts to add up. Now, the next couple of ones you'll start seeing are italicized, and we're going to look at those special part of the new update. These are financial ways in terms of the types of credit cards and when and where to use them. You know, you got that little leak. Uh, you, wait a minute. That's almost $100 a year. You know, I bet when we started this off, you probably thought, oh, I'll just tip less. I'll turn off the night light. I'll recycle the cans. Look what? Look there. At the bottom. Dead last. You know what these add up to? Enough to get you over $4,000, which in a high income tax state is that two thirds that you would be able to get necessary to fund $6,000 for a traditional IRA account. That's pretty good. Here are those groupings I told you about of just the financial ways to save money been some subtle updates here uh, various credit cards out there available don't bother with the frequent flyer miles they're only worth about a penny and a half most of them expire except Delta and uh, gosh you'd need about what dozen trips to get one unlike the old days I, you know bird in the hands worth two in the bush get that cash now cash never expires and uh, you know I told you about getting that ATM card which uh, rebates anywhere. Uh, now, there's some others. Uh, we have that Chase card. It's annoying. It doesn't amount to much, but mm, something to think about. And it's quarterly. Uh, it should be noted that Bank America now has a monthly option where you can change your promotions. And uh, you have uh, the Capital One. I know you've seen it on TV, 1.5%. Notice it's the lowest here on the list, just like the Chase card. But uh, Bank of America, 3% on gas, 2% on groceries, just as the Capital One Saver card does with an extra, look at that, 4% instead for restaurants. Heads up. I know I'm grandfathered in, it's free to me, but it now has an annual charge, so heads up on that. By the way, a little subtle one, Shell is now giving five cents off a gallon if you just plug in your phone number on the dispenser. Of course, that's if you're not taking the rebates. One of those rebates comes from using those grocery store cards, which in the case of Vons goes to Chevron, and in the case of Ralph's goes to Shell. Any case, you can save if you're getting an average of 4% on gas, $50 a week, let's say, $100 a year, 1.5% on that Capital One card. Heads up on that one. That's pretty good. You know why? No foreign transaction fee for currency conversion, which is about 3%. Bank of America still charges that. Heads up on that. Then you have that 10, 20, can even be more cents per gallon on that Vons, Ralph, Chevron, Shell cards. Yeah, okay, 70 bucks a year. And then you have the actual give back on the rebates on buying the groceries on your cards. It's average of uh, two and three quarters percent a year. And that 4% dining, I'll throw that in there. You know what? Adds up to over $500. That's not bad. And it, guess what? If you can't do your Roth, that's almost a trip to Europe. Got me sold. Now, the question always arises to whether you should take the traditional tax-deductible, taxable back IRA account or the Roth non-taxable in and out. Remember, the totals are six or 7000 respectively. Uh, you know what it really depends on? What state are you going to retire in? Or what will be the state of your taxes when you retire? Here are the high income state taxes. And here are the states that have absolutely no income tax. So that's something to think about. I do like to point out if you're in a high income state tax, you would have, say, a total of one third tax. You would be setting aside something like 50% more dollar amounts when you do do a tax-free Roth account. Something to think about while you're rebalancing your account, learning those new tax rules with Dr. C. Invest.